the world is understandably in over their heads trying to envision a time when the pandemic is finally under control, the futurists have already moved on to celebrating the unintended consequences of the coronavirus. The frantic shift to online learning forced schools, colleges, and universities to adapt. The beauty in all of this chaos is the freedom from stubborn fear of the unknown. While some schools are known for their innovation, American education as a whole lags behind industry and technological innovation thanks to the educators who stand in the way of progress because change is scary. But now we've become used to living in a constant state of fear and it somehow freed us from our shackles and forced the resistant ones among us to transition to if not embrace a culture of change. The pandemic fixed one of education's biggest problems. It ripped us out of our comfort zone and showed us that we're capable of surviving massive disruption. People can adjust faster than most likely thought. So the engineers who have been developing emerging technologies are now at an incredible place to ride this wave of adaptability and lead us into the future of mixed reality instruction faster than anyone could have imagined just a year ago. The country has perhaps never been in such an advantageous state of mind to usher in a new era of education that integrates pretty mind-blowing innovations in mixed reality technology. The future classroom will look nothing like 300-seat lecture halls. It won't be constrained to a place or even time. In the future, educators won't struggle this hard to hold students accountable in endless team meetings that look more like black holes, only dimly lit by student initials because nobody wants to turn on their web camera. In the future, parents won't have to fight with their children to turn off video games and do their homework because learning will be just as, if not more entertaining and engaging than Fortnite and League of Legends. We will be greeted by new iterations of virtual reality technology with stronger mixed reality integrations as more companies develop ways to enhance augmented reality with VR and vice versa. Other companies like Alterdux, for example, are taking it a step further, even integrating video conferencing, AR, VR, MR, and artificial intelligence. Textbooks will come alive as 3D digital animations, photos and videos jump off pages and into mobile devices thanks to QR codes. VR is without a doubt the future of education. VR offers solutions to so many of education's mounting problems. The coronavirus isn't going away tomorrow, and its effect on remote working will be imprinted in our country's industries forever. The pandemic accelerated and highlighted the need for a solution to boredom, isolation, distraction, campus infrastructure, and costly faculty salaries. Not only can VR help schools bounce back from this trying year, it can also greatly enhance learning. Since Jargon Lanier was first credited with coming up with the term in 1987, the technology has dramatically improved. It has the ability to create meaningful learning experiences for students. The augmented reality company Zephyr is also investing in more virtual reality technology. They just launched a Kickstarter campaign for a project that they're calling Zapbox. This would integrate some of the augmented reality technology that Zapper is known for with VR to elevate mixed reality to a new dimension. Zapbox is expected to be less expensive since it relies on smartphone instead of a gaming console. The $40 price point would make this VR tool more accessible. Zapper also says that the headset is much more customizable for different smartphones than many mobile headsets. This integration of AR and VR is likely to be a much larger part of the future of education. While VR 360 video in mobile headsets is a phenomenal teaching tool to immerse students into photos, videos, and animations, the next iteration of VR will change the game for educators. Several companies are now working on integrating wearable VR haptic suits with full body tracking. As of December, Shockwave announced that it raised $100,000 on Kickstarter for a VR spandex jacket that allows people to feel everything from a gentle hand to an explosion. The vibrations elevate the user's sense to not only see and hear in VR, but to literally feel the environment they're in. Some companies, like Immersive VR Education, 
are already winning awards for their VR tools that include groundbreaking production value. In 2019, the Berlin Blitz collaborated with the BBC, won Best VR Experience at the Digital Broadcast Awards. This cinematic VR experience immersed students in the middle of an intense World War II battle. They were recognized for accurately recreating historical events using mission data and voice recordings from 1943. Immersive VR education proves that there is a financial incentive for educators to invest in VR. According to their September report, their revenue increased by 37% since 2019. The chief executive credits part of the recent success to the growing need for physical distancing because of the pandemic. In addition to the increase in VR instruction, the future of this emerging technology will also increase access for students, teachers, and instructional designers to create their own VR content. A lot has changed since WordPress and YouTube launched new initiatives to make VR more widely available. <laughs> In 2015, YouTube began supporting 360-degree videos on its platform. Shortly after, WordPress enabled everyday users to enhance their websites with VR. This was an important step to democratizing VR content publication. Since then, several educators have launched innovative VR curriculum. Robert Hernandez from USC Annenberg School of Communication and Journalism launched a VR storytelling project called Journalism. Using 360-degree cameras and photogrammetry, Fernandez teaches students how to create immersive stories that enhance empathy and compassion. One project aimed to show people what it's like to be homeless. This is where I normally wake up in the morning. Students set up a 360-degree camera inside a homeless person's tent and edited a day-in-a-life VR video to humanize people who are so often misunderstood and overlooked. VR's ability to increase empathy is only beginning to be tapped. The future of VR education will not only make history lessons more fun, it will also arm educators with a powerful tool to teach emotional intelligence, compassion, and empathy, especially when students are the ones creating the content. This prediction is reinforced by several studies that found that VR can make students feel more committed and motivated. It's also consistent with a constructivist approach to learning that promotes a full student-centered learning experience. The implications for elevating an immersive multimedia experience to one where students can feel the environment around them opens up an entirely new world where educators can grab their learner's focus and truly offer them a visceral experience that leads to emotions that have been found to strengthen memory and achieve learning in the brain. While many are embracing the potential benefits of VR in education, there are some concerns that need to be addressed in order to improve access and equity. Cost is by far the most commonly published concern in regard to VR technology, not just the cost of buying the headset, but developing the VR experiences. Some VR headsets may require a high-end PC, gaming console, or smartphone to operate. Some require external sensors or monitors, and those might be complex to set up. To create VR content, a 360 camera would be a common requirement, which may be out of the budget for some teachers and students. Because of the budget cuts schools are now facing thanks to coronavirus, my recommendation is that schools start now with what they can control. There are many 360 videos on YouTube that teachers can start embedding into their learning management system. Starting here will help transition some educators who may be hesitant to jump headfirst into VR content creation. Another less intimidating place to start is a mini clip on VR glasses. These lightweight and often foldable VR glasses simply clip onto a smartphone and easily work with VR videos on YouTube. If schools buy these in large batches, they cost about a dollar each. Many university libraries, like the University of South Florida, for example, now allow students and educators to check out 360-degree cameras for free. 
I recommend that teachers consider recording 360 degree videos of experiences that are now hard to recreate because of COVID-19 safety restrictions. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these lights off so that you can see what they look like. Um, I actually have an additional light besides for these little uh, three-piece kits that we have here. And that is the light that's coming in through these windows. One of the ways that I use a 360 degree camera this semester was to record a VR lighting demonstration for my TV news students. This allowed students to look around to see where they should set up all of the lights and cameras. While educators wait for administration to unfreeze budgets, they can apply for innovation grants that may cover the cost of VR headsets for their students. My biggest recommendation is that teachers just start using it themselves. They need to force themselves to become comfortable with the technology that consumer gaming industries show is more and more commonly used among our students. Not only do we need to start meeting our students where they are, we also need to step it up and take initiative to learn about these new tools so that we can give our students reasons to want to learn. Let's show them how we can take a devastating pandemic and turn it into a catalyst for innovation. Let's lead the way to show our students that we can adapt and thrive using virtual reality.